What's this little strand? Just chill it. No, come on, get in. What shall I do with him? Are you going to relax? I tucked him in. Tucked him in. Hello, honeys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're just joining me now, then <gasps> hello. Thank you for finding me. I don't know how you found me, but this is a bit of a different video for me. I don't normally do story times, but I thought I've always got a story, so why not share it with my huns? Also, my hun. Look at this. Sorry. Sorry. What? Hun, you're a boss. That scared me, but that's the food. Do you hear that go off? That scared me. Thank you very much, banana tree. Thank you very much, Deliveroo. 2208, and yes, I'm getting food. Yes, I'm filming at 10 o'clock at night, and yes, I'm eating at 10 o'clock at night. I'm sorry, but you just never know when you're gonna be hungry. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm not gonna lie to you, Hans. I'm a little bit nervous about doing this because this is a different kind of video for me, isn't it? I'm doing a story time. Like, I know I always incorporate stories into my other videos, but this is just story times and I'm sharing with you my previous dates. So this video is going to be story times on previous first date fails. What was I talking about before? Oh yeah, butterfly brain. I was talking about this top. Hun, you're a boss. We are all bosses. We're all huns and we're all bosses. So I'm so glad I found this top. Some of you tagged me in it and I was like, thank you. And then when I bought it because I was like, I need that. I'm sorry, but we're all huns and we're all bosses. And this video is about really rubbish dates I've had, which I didn't feel like a boss. I didn't feel like a boss. Actually, I did feel like a boss because I walked out of there and was like, I don't need a man. They were quite a long time ago these days, but I still have to tell you about them. I've got my water. Listen, I always buy a litre and a half of water. I always buy a big bottle because then I know when I've gone through this, I've done a litre and a half for the day. Just thought I'd let you huns on in on that one. Not that anyone cares how much water I drink a day, but I like to get a big bottle because then I know what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? Let's get on with the story time. I need to start with this first story. Well, well well my friend was like Imogen you never go on dates you never put yourself out there I'm gonna set you up I was like okay and she snapchatted me when she was out in Derby and she was like you need to go on a date with this guy he lives in London he's from my area he's an actor you get on so well blah blah blah, blah. and she's sitting next to him and she sends me a dark snapchat and from my eyes I'm like oh he's cute I don't actually think it's all about attraction you know like the boys that I'm instantly attracted to they're not normally the nicest of boys and I also think that Growing up, I've realized that someone who's really good looking, I'm attracted to them, but if they've got no substance or nothing about them, that's not gonna keep me entertained, is it, if you know what I mean? I just want someone who's loving, makes me laugh, and who has a kind heart. Because let's be real, if you're lying next to them in 30 years, and yeah, okay, they're a pretty face, but they're not a very nice person, I definitely know which one I'd rather. I don't really care about looks, because I think that you fall in love with someone's personality. That's me anyway, that's me personally. But let's get back to the story, butterfly. My food's just sitting there, I don't know whether to eat it. No, I'll eat it in a minute. Maybe I'll eat it after this story. So she sends me this drunk Snapchat and it's in the dark, so I can't really see him. So I'm like, okay, well, listen, you're my one of my closest friends, I trust you, I trust your judgment. It's firework night, ages and ages ago, a couple of years ago, ages and ages ago, a couple of years ago, bonfire night, is that the same as firework night? Yeah. I'm at work and I used to work on the door at this bar in London, in bank area. I'd finished at like eight, I think. I think I was only doing an early shift. I was literally doing five to eight, maybe, I think. And I said to him, I'll meet him there for nine. He said to me, why don't we meet in this bar? And I was like, okay, but I don't drink just thought I'd let you know that. And he was like, yeah, let's go to this really cool cocktail bar. And I was like, don't think you're really getting it. Don't drink, but whatever, I'll have a pint of pineapple juice. I don't really care. So I'm sitting in the Uber and the Uber was 2.2 times the fare. 2.2 times the fare. Imogen being not so great with her brain sometimes, the butterfly brain, I obviously left it at home that day. I don't even know what happened. Well, anyway, I'm sitting in the car and the Uber's like, it's gonna take us an hour and 20 minutes to get there, love, and I'm like, I'm gonna be about 20 minutes late for him. Don't really care about being late for him, not gonna lie. I care about the fact that I'm sitting in a car that's gonna be an hour and 20 minutes long and it's 2.2 times. Half an hour of the journey and I'm saying to him, and we're stuck in traffic because obviously it's bonfire night in London. Everyone's everywhere. And I'm traveling from one side of the bridge to the other. So I'm in this car and I'm thinking, just stay in the car, Imogen, you might as well. Because by the time you get on the tube, the tubes will all be busy, they'll all be packed. You won't get to a tube because you won't be able to walk there because it's absolutely ram-packed, jam-packed full on the roads. I'm going to sit in the car, I'm going to sit in the car. So the taxi driver's getting funny with me first off anyway. Have you got an AUX cable? No, he hasn't. Have you got an iPhone charger? No, he hasn't. And I'm like, so I'm going to pay about £70 for this Uber and you haven't even got a charger. 
thank you. So I got there 45 minutes late and I was so apologetic to him. I was like, oh my God, I'm so, so, so sorry. I was sitting down, he was chilling, he was loving life. He'd had two drinks by this point, maybe even three, but he said two, but I don't even know. I think three. So I get there and then you know the little email comes through to you and you're like, oh yeah, 80 pounds. 80 pound for an Uber, 80 pounds. I think it's something like 88, somewhere around the 80 margin. And this date better be good because I've just spent 80 pounds. Don't even want to talk about that part because that, that just, I'm bitter about this. I'm looking at him first off the back and I'm like, oh, he's got quite a pretty face. A lot shorter than me, but that's okay. My friend's a lot taller than me, so I don't know why she didn't tell me about that one, but it doesn't even matter. I don't care about height, but I'm just saying he was a lot shorter than me. As I sat down, this is the first part. I'd introduce myself, blah, blah, blah. He went, can I have the same again? To the waitress. Not saying, do you want a drink? So then he got his drink and it was a double vodka something. And I was like, okay. Or whiskey or something, I can't remember what he was drinking. And he didn't even go, oh, sorry, did you want one? I'm not a prima donna, I'm not a diva, I don't care. I'll order my own drink, I'll pay for my own stuff. I'm sweet with that. But when you sit down and you said to my friend, you want to take me out and then you order yourself a drink in front of me and don't even ask if I want one, are you? Okay, I'll wait five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, no drink still. He'd got his drink, nearly finished it by this point. And I said to the waitress, oh, is it possible if I get a drink, please? She was like, yeah, yeah, I just thought you were waiting to order. So I said, oh, can I just have a pineapple juice? She went, do you want a pint? I was like, already love you, already love you. A pint of pineapple juice? Of course I do, babes. So for the first 20 minutes of the day, I heard all about his life, heard his life story. And he told me how he really wants to get into acting and he's got a really good agent and I was really happy for him, but, it was almost like, because I was doing acting at the time, and he was like, what agency are you with? And I told him the agency, and he was like, oh God, you need to get a better agent. And I was like, okay, you've already been rude there, but okay. And then he went, oh, you just do adverts. And I was like, I've done a couple of adverts. Yes. He was like, well, I'm literally at the final two for Hollyoaks. And I was like, back in the day, Huns, back in the day, I used to audition for some stuff. I used to do some acting bits. This is all very exciting. And I actually got to the final two for a soap character. I don't think anyone's that interested, but I could tell a story about that one day. If anyone wants to know about my auditions and stuff like that, I could do a story time about that. That's a whole other story. I was sitting there thinking, I don't need to sit here and start telling you my bio, like my CV. I'm here to get to know you. By this point, he's downed his drink and he's ordered another one. I'm still not even through my pine pineapple juice and I can drink pineapple juice quick. Like, don't underestimate me with my pineapple juice. I can drink it fast. So then, I start talking a tiny bit about myself. Just he, he's asking me some questions and I'm replying. He said to me, you're really closed. You're a really closed person. And I'm thinking, I'm definitely not a closed person, I'm quite open. I'm very open, what you see is what you get, I'm very open. If I'm angry, you know about it. If I'm happy, you know about it. If I'm sad, I'll tell someone how I'm feeling. I'm very, very open. You all know that, all my huns know that. He's like, I just feel like I'm not really getting anything out of you. And I'm like, you're acting as if we're in a relationship. I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, like, tell me about your previous boyfriends. Like, what were they like? Show me pictures of them. And I was like, I'm, I don't think I'm really gonna get my ex-boyfriends up on Facebook and start showing them to you, if, if I'm honest. <laughs> and I like made a joke of it. I was like, oh, you get yours up. Let's, let's have a ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend comparison. I was like, I'm joking, obviously. But then he starts telling me how he's gonna get me a better agent. He's like, I think I really need to help you with your agency and with your acting work. And I was like, babe, you don't even know if I'm good. I could be really bad. I said, don't put that on yourself. I said, one day, whatever's meant to be will just be like, you don't need to worry about it, babe, honestly. And he was like, no, 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 honestly, I do. Like when I go into my agency, they just love me. Like honestly, when I get in there, they just think I'm so funny. Like I've been told so much that I'm meant to get this part and this part. And, like I know I'm talented, but they always tell me and it's just such an ego boost when I go in there. And I was like, I just don't like you. I'm not, I'm not a fan. And I'm thinking to myself in my head this whole time, where's my friend got it in her head that I need to go on a date with you? I messaged my friend, I spoke to my friend, I called my friend and said, baby girl, I don't know what you did, but you did something wrong. It was the thought that counts, but <laughs> that's all that counted. So throughout the day, it was getting progressively worse and the boys drinking, drinking to excess, each to their own, drink as much as you want. But when I'm still on my pint of pineapple juice and you've had about eight drinks and you're mixing your drinks and you're drunk, He's drunk. He grabbed my leg and I was like, huh? <laughs> no, thank you. If the feeling was there and it was, you know, oh God, like I'm attracted to him and we're getting on really well and he touched my leg, I wouldn't care. But he touched my leg and I was like, no. I glided it off. I just glided it off like that. Oh no. No, don't 
he starts telling me, I just think you're really independent. Maybe you're a bit too independent. That's why you're not letting anyone in. I'm thinking, am I on Oprah? Like, am I being analysed here? I don't really need to be analysed, babe. I don't pay £80 to be analysed, babe. If I wanted to go to a therapist session, I would pay a bit more than that. I've been there for about an hour and a half right now, but I think it's been about three hours. Oh, this is intense. So I said to him, I'm really hungry. I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to go get some food and then go home and chill. I've been at work and blah, blah, blah. My reason to get out. <laughs> It gets so much worse, Huns. Just wait. So then we're sitting there, and the boy thinks he's Brad Pitt. He honestly thinks he's Brad Pitt. He's looking around, kind of thing, thinking he's the dog's bollocks, as my dad would say. And I'm thinking, I don't really know where you've got your head out of because apparently it's shoved in your bum, but whatever. And honestly, Huns, if you were on this date, you would have literally been like, I can't even deal with this. But I thought, I've spent this money. I feel out of order if I just get up and leave. I just felt like I had to be there and finish my pineapple juice, but I couldn't even stomach it. And then the bill comes and we're in a London bar. And this is a really expensive London cocktail bar. I'm glad I got a pineapple juice because even my pint of pineapple juice was like seven pounds. And it's like 122 pounds. And I'm like, Okay, so the eight drinks he's had it with me. He's obviously had a couple more fine Don't really know what's gonna happen here because I've literally had a seven pound pineapple juice, but I'm a lady I'm an independent woman. I offered fair enough because I really believe like independent woman I pay my own way. I do everything myself fair enough I pay my rent I pay my food. I do everything myself But I just felt that was a bit of a joke like let's be honest He bought all these drinks and he's looking at me as if then I went. Oh, I've I've got my card so I'll just I'll put some money towards it or I'll pay whatever. I don't really care. He went, really? Okay, that's so sweet. Sorry. Sorry, what? And I literally was sitting there like, wait, is this some kind of joke? And he was like, thank you. That's so sweet, thank you. I mean, okay, maybe I shouldn't have even said anything. I didn't believe a guy would actually make me pay £122 for his drinks. I am quite sassy and I am feisty. I say what I feel. So I turned around to him and went, listen, I'm going to pay, but I do think that's a bit out of order. Like, I'm going to pay for your drinks. But this is what's funny. So then when I said my piece and said, listen, actually, I'm not going to be funny or anything, but I don't actually think I should be paying for your drinks when you've spent that much money on alcohol and I haven't even had a drink except a pineapple juice. And he went, oh, I only put £40 cash out with me anyway. What was that? And he said, I've only bought £40 cash out with me. So you just spent £122 minus a seven, okay? So you've just spent £115 on alcohol, but you only have £40 cash. So I thought, listen, Hans, I can't even be bothered to have an argument with him. It was a tiny little bar. Everyone was around. I just thought, I need to get up and get out of here. I was like, I'll just pay. So I paid £122 on the card. Then I left £3 tip because the poor girl had been running back and forth for this boy. He'd been so rude to her. He was rude to the waitress as well, by the way, guys. He was rude to the waitress. I mean, I just thought, you're 28 years old. Have you not been brought up right? Anyway. Anyway. So I put £3. This is the funny part. Put £3 tip down. And he took the tip. And that... That is no word of a lie. I called my friend afterwards and was like, what just happened? He took the three pound tip because I looked back and I was like, it wasn't on the table. So I went to him and he went, bus fare. What? Mm -mm. I went, go and put it back now. I went, you're so disrespectful. Go and put it back. That's my money. And that's that girl's money. Go and put it back. But I don't care. That was out of order. So then I was like, I'm literally just going to go to the diner. I'm just going to go get some food, blah, blah, blah. He was like, let me come with you. I was like, no, I'm fine, thank you. He went, yeah, I'm coming with you. I'm taking you for dinner. I'm taking you for dinner. You just pay for that, I'm taking you for dinner. And I thought, no, I'm okay. He was adamant. He was like, well, I'm walking you there now. I'm walking you there. And I was like, oh my God, this boy's a weirdo. This boy's a weirdo. I thought, listen, fine. You can pay for the food. I'll rack up a 40 pound bill. Because let's be honest, well, if he'd had the three pound from my tip, I would have had a 43 pound dinner. But anyway, so he followed me and I'm thinking, oh, I just want this to be over. I mean, I know what I'm like now. I'm a lot more sassy, but at the time I was like, I just can't be bothered to argue. Fine, just come in. Comes in, this girl skates over on her roller skates and she's so sweet, loved her. I think her name was Molly. I loved Molly. I think she was so sweet. Anyway, Molly comes over on her skates and she took our order and I ordered chicken, these things, blah, 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 sweet potato, blah, blah, blah. I've ordered and it came to like 35 pound or something. I know it was under his 40 pound mark, I remember it. Maybe it was even 32 or something like that. And by the way, I munched that dinner so quick, had indigestion, I had to come home and take some Gaviscon because I ate so quickly because I wanted to get out of there. We didn't even speak. We did not even speak. He just kept saying to me, so what do you want? What do you want? And I was like, food. I just kept going, food. I just want the food. That's all. And he was like, what do you really want? I was like, food. That's all I want. Food. 
and for you to go away. And the girl comes over on her skates. She just sat there and thought, well, you're paying for this, so it's fine. And he went, we're gonna pay card, if that's okay. Card machine, can you get a card machine? I was like, oh, you got card, have you? She comes over with the card machine. She sort of lent in to sort of give it to him because I'm thinking he's paying because he said he's taking me for dinner. And he went, oh, you've got the card, haven't you? And I went, listen, hun, sorry about this, Molly. And I literally said, sorry about this, Molly. You just said you're gonna pay for dinner. And he was like, oh, oh, did I? Yeah. I genuinely thought I was going crazy. I honestly promise you, I thought I was going crazy. And I thought this video is gonna be one I tell my children and my grandchildren. Definitely not children that have ever come from him though. He is not coming anywhere near my kids. Let's be real. He's like, how much is it? Yeah, can we take the um, service charge off? The service charge comes into the bill. I was like, this is so embarrassing. I don't care. I don't care if you took me on a first date to McDonald's. I'm not about that. I don't care about money. I'm not about that. That's the least thing I'm bothered about. Me and my ex-boyfriend used to literally sit in a room and just watch DVDs and cuddle and tell each other how much we loved each other. I did not care about going out to expensive places or anything like that. But when you take me on a date and you tell me you're gonna pay for food and then you look at me as if you're gonna pay when you just paid 122 pounds for drinks that you didn't even drink. Ah, uh, ah, uh, honey, ah, uh, uh, honey, ah, uh, ah, uh, honey. I'm sorry, I was like, what? Wait, what? We leave and he's like, are you gonna take me to the bus stop? How am I gonna take you to the bus stop? It didn't stop. He was literally like, are you gonna walk me to the bus stop? And I was like, no, babe. He's like, my bus is in eight minutes, it's just opposite there. Can you walk me to the bus stop? I was like, am I holding your hand? Are you a baby? Are you a child? Are you a rug rat? Are you a rug rat? And I was like, no, I'm sorry. I'm getting my Uber and I'm leaving. My Uber cost me like six pound home. So the whole night cost me like 350 pound, but I didn't care because that's an experience I can share with my honeys. I always knew this story would come in handy. So actually it's made a good story time on my video. Well, I hope it's made a good story time on the video. I hope you liked it, Hans. I hope you can listen and laugh at my misfortune because let's be real. Basically, the moral of the story is don't let your friends set you up on dates. I just thought about it. My takeaway is going to be going cold and I don't really want to start eating on the camera. Let me just eat a little bit. It, then I'm gonna come back and tell you the next story time. Huh? Sorry, Hans, but it was going cold. Do you know what I mean? I've unbuttoned my trousers and I feel a bit more comfy now, and I feel a lot more full. So let's get on with the next one. This one isn't a first date fail, but this is like a first I can't even deal fail. Like I've never experienced this. What can I call him? Philip. Philippe because he was French, ready for this. So basically I came out of hospital and I went to start working at the Hollister Regent Street. I was like, listen, I'm coming back to London. I've been in hospital for a while, I was really ill. And then I came out and I was all sprightly and I was like, oh, there's boys, oh my God. You know, when you've been in hospital and you've been cooped up and you see men, you're like, oh my God. I went back into the Hollister Regent Street just to get booked back on the books because I used to be there anyway. So I was like, oh, I just want to get my job back. So I went and spoke to the manager and as soon as I came out of the door, it's the manager, I literally bumped into Philippe and I was like, Honestly, I swear, I swear on my life, he was so fit. He is a very beautiful boy. I've picked up my lip liner somewhere along the way, but he is very beautiful. He's a gorgeous boy. And I remember seeing him being like, okay, I need to kiss you right now. I've been in hospital and I've been cooped up ill for about a year. Mm, mm. I saw him and I was like, I need you. Anyway, as soon as I came out, he was like, uh, hello, what is your name? And I was like, oh, hello, my name's Imogen. And I was like, you are very pretty. I was so forward. I was like, listen, I'm so funny like that. Sometimes I have mad confidence and sometimes I'm like, oh my God, when there's a boy I like, I get really shy. I was on one after hospital because I hadn't seen people for a long time. So I was like, I'm going to talk to you. He spoke no English at this point though. Not really a lot of English at all. And this boy came up to the door and was like, Philip fancies you. And I was like, well, I fancy Philippe. I was like, Oh, I want a slice of Philippe, I'm telling you that. <laughs> I literally just wanted to kiss him. I just wanted to kiss his face, that was it. I literally just wanted to kiss him. So then Philippe comes up to me and he's like, uh, can I have your number? And I was like, I love the fact you're at work and you're being this forward to me. I'm on my way out, but yeah, of course you can. He took my WhatsApp and we started WhatsApping and he was like, please can I take for food? After that point, we were dating for about a month. Everyone at Hollister knew he was very open about it. He was very, 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 forward at work. Like my manager used to come up to me and be like, we're gonna have to move you because he was all over me at work, like kissing me at work, which I quite like, but it was a bit like, it's, it was intense. I don't know whether that's the French way, but he was very, very passionate and very romantic and you know, all this and uh, oh, you're so beautiful. After about a month, things went downhill. I was just having fun. I was just having fun going on dates with him. You know, I got to do loads of things with him. Like we went around London because he was exploring it and I got to show him around. But then I also got to see a lot of things around London that I wouldn't have necessarily gone to see. So it was quite nice. And I'm a sucker for a French accent. French men are my weakness. That's my weakness. Like when they speak French to me, I'm like, but no more, no more. Not after Philippe, no more. At work, it annoyed me slightly. These girls, mm, 
Mm, not girls girls they were always all over him and he was always telling me about it one day my manager said to me yeah like these girls are constantly talking to him and asking him about you and him and I'm like why they're not my friends like leave off then it made me slightly like him a little bit more because you know when someone's coming for your territory you're like no Hans he's mine back off so then on Valentine's Day he was arranging something special and I was like this is so cute sorry if there's hair coming out Hans I'm sorry we're just gonna have to leave it but then he turned up with roses and I was like that's really cute really sweet I'm not really a flower kind of girl I'd rather you go out and buy like a 30p chocolate bar which I've said I really like than buy me flowers I like thoughtful things more they go after seven days I'd rather something I can remember I mean I know a chocolate bar will go in 0.7 seconds but I'd rather something that you've actually got out of your way to think about so then we go for dinner and then he's like do you want to come back to my house now by this point we've done nothing we've just kissed I'm a slow burner. I'm a slow burner. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. And he's like, I've got a surprise for you back at the house. And I'm like, if you've got a surprise for me, then maybe it's that chocolate bar I was waiting for. No, I'm joking. So anyway, we go back to his house and we get on. We get on really well. Like he thought I was crazy, which I am, let's be honest. But we did get on quite well. And at this point, I think he's quite nice. And on the way back to his flat, he's getting really arrogant. And I'm like, I don't know where this has come from. I, I mean, we were sitting there and he was like, do you feel lucky to be with me? Hmm? Sorry, Philip. I mean, you, you probably feel very lucky uh, to be with me. And I was like, sorry if I'm doing a really bad French accent, by the way, Hans, but I've just got to put you in the scenario with me and Philippe. And he's like, uh, don't you feel so lucky to be with me? Um, I mean, yeah, you're a, a lovely boy, but, you know, vice versa, and you're lucky to be sitting here with this hun, do you know what I mean? So anyway, get back to his flat, and he's got roses all over the bed and stuff, and I'm thinking, I know what he wants. I know what he wants, but he's not going to get it. He's not going to get it. He's not my boyfriend, and you only get that if you're my boyfriend. So we started kissing, right? And I could tell he wanted something. So I said, listen, I'm not gonna have sex with you unless you're my boyfriend. That's just not the way I am. And I don't know you well enough yet. Like we've only spent a month together, but you know, I don't know you that well. I guess I had reservations. Let's be honest, if I really liked him and I was with him and you know, whatever, things happen and that's how things happen sometimes. It happens naturally. But when I felt like he'd planned for me to have sex with him on Valentine's Day, I was a bit like, mm -mm, this isn't for me. And you know, when you're just not feeling it, you're not feeling it, you don't have to force something. If I wanted to have sex with him, I would have had sex with him, but I actually didn't, because I was like, oh, this is so cringe. It was too cringe, it was too planned, if you know what I mean. So I said to him, listen, I'm just not gonna. He flipped a switch. I saw a different human being. It was like he went from zero to W-A-N-K-E-R. I'm not swearing, I'm just spelling it out. That's what he went into, and I was like, he was like, you don't want to sleep with me? And I was like, no. Not yet and he was like why nobody has ever say no to me and i was like i'm just saying no to you now i'm not saying no to you in the future but like calm down and he was like you are lucky i have face of angel body of angel and i was like whoa there fella i haven't seen your body yet you've got a face of angel but you haven't got the heart of an angel let's be honest this boy flipped I mean, I promise you, we spoke every single day we saw each other most days i got on so well with him and he just flipped it was like I don't know whether I just damaged his ego or something, but he just flipped. He was like, get out, get out. He summoned me out as if I mortified him, as if I cheated on him. That's how he acted. So then I left. He didn't even check if I got the Uber. He didn't even care how I got out of his flat. He was like, just leave. I was like, mm-mm, no. I was like, listen, you don't speak to me like that. You are nothing special, and the way you're acting, you are not anything special now. You could be the best looking person in the whole world, but you are ugly to me right now because you're being so awful. That's what I said to him. Because let's be honest, you can be so beautiful, but if you haven't got a beautiful heart, that means nothing to me. Like, I don't care what you look like on the outside if you're gonna flip a switch like that just because I don't wanna sleep with you. I leave, and then I go to work the next day, and I've gotta see him. And I see him, and he's talking to this girl who I knew was trying it on with him, and I was like, all right, you do you, don't worry about me. My manager came over to me, my manager was like, oh, I heard about last night, and I was like, what? So then he told everyone at work that we had sex, and that he cut it off, because I got too needy. So I was like, and I said to my manager, are you being serious, are you winding me up, did he actually say that? And he was like, no, yeah, he told me you had sex, and that you were a bit clingy afterwards. I was like, he wished we had sex, and he wishes I was clingy afterwards. I ain't no clinger. I went over to him, because I don't care. I went over to him and was like, listen, Philippe, what happened? I said it in front of the girl, because I don't care. Because if she was going to get involved with it, she needs to know what she's getting involved with. I said to him, apparently we had sex last night. I said, you must have been absolutely awful, because I don't remember a thing of it. Although I probably would remember something that actually happened, because it didn't. Did it. And he was like, oh, shut up. And he was like, just because I don't want you. Listen. Turns to the girl, and I was like, he's trying to mug me off, by the way. And if you're interested in this still, then you need to have your head checked. If you still think he's attractive, then you need to realize that he's an awful human being. And I said to him, right, I'm gonna leave you two to it, because obviously, I don't know, but 
she's your next victim. If people don't want to sleep with you, you need to accept that. You're a horrible person and I told him about himself. I told him about himself. I will tell everyone here I haven't had sex with you and I will mug you. I will mug you. Like, don't come for me because I will come to you. I'm a really, really nice person. I pride myself on being nice to other people. But when you cross me and you start lying about me, mm, mm, mm. Honey, Huns, we gotta stand up for ourselves. And let's be honest, us girls got to stick together. So I want to tell that girl, if she actually believed a guy that spoke to me like that is still a nice person, I thought, more for you, honeybee, because if he's talking to me like that, that baby boy isn't a baby boy. Anyway, listen to this. He left after like two weeks of working there, slept with loads of girls that worked there. So, I mean, well done, baby boy. At least some girls gave you some action because you were getting none from this, hun. You ain't getting none from this, hun, buns. What is that song? Buns, hun, we don't, oh, we don't want no buns, hun. Don't even remember it. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Ignore me, just ignore me. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. And if you remember the song, then comment below because I love you because it's just gone. He's on Made in Chelsea in a relationship with one of the girls when they did the French special. He messaged me on Facebook like two months prior to that being like, hello, I've moved back to France, but I'd love to see you when I'm back in London. I deleted and blocked the boy. I deleted and blocked the boy. But basically, yeah, he went on Made in Chelsea and I was like, oh, okay, hon. Let's see if anyone gives you some action now, hon. And I thought, you playing it. You're trying to come across as a nice guy. You ain't no nice guy. Moral of the story, huns. Don't get with some male model that's French from Hollister. When well, he's not there anymore, so you can get with any male model from Hollister if you want, but just not him because he ain't good. <laughs> Honeys, I hope this is all right. I mean, I know I'm literally just sitting here telling you stories, but I quite like it. It's actually really fun. Do you know what song I was listening to today that I really like? That's an old song. Kano and Craig David, this is the girl. I knew the rap. Of course I knew the rap. Uncomfortable. It's been way more than a month or two. It's deeper than that. I'll roll with you so no other chick can't come close to you. And deep down, I'll know the truth. Notice you don't like how they come with you if chicks want to hug me in front of you. But I don't mean to be rude. I want finding another one quite like you. I know that we become so close. And I know one more so you go on tour with girls backstage after the encore. But I'm down for you. Look out for you. Try my best to be around for you. And if you're still down, you'll want you to know you're the one I want when I'm gone. This is the girl that I want. These two previous dates, they missed out because I can rap. Honey, we can rap. I mean, I'm joking. I definitely. I think I can rap, I can learn raps very well. <laughs> I've got a last one for you. I've got quite a few of these stories, but this is a funny one. I need to tell you about this. When I was working at the bar in Bank, and when I was on the door, this guy kept speaking to me. He'd come quite regularly because he worked around there, and he kept asking me out and kept asking me out for about six months, and I was like, no, no, no. And my friend who I worked with on the door, she kept saying to me, just go out with him. Like, just give him a chance. He's always badgering you, and he obviously is persistent. You've got to give him that. And he was really funny, actually, and he was good looking, and what? But the thing is, this is where I made a mistake. I never, ever really sat down with him he'd come in he'd make a joke to me we'd chat for about five minutes and then he'd go in and then he'd come out then he'd go come in say how have I been blah 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 it was a very quick conversation all the time I ever saw him so going on a date with someone that you think you know when you definitely don't know them definitely don't know them oh Lucy's just messaged me I love Lucy she's in late coma you love it so much it's just so beautiful I wish you were here just finished watching a new video I loved it so much Lucy I actually love you I actually love you so I eventually gave in I was like listen let's just go on a date so he messaged me and was like really funny the way he texted and I should have sort of clicked on then just the way he was texting was really sort of I don't know he made me feel really spaced out the way he was messaging it was just really weird he'd like message me at weird times in the night and the day and just say weird things and I was like I don't know if this boy is drinking throughout the day I don't know what he's doing throughout the day but he's just a bit strange but I'm strange so I thought who cares because I am weird I am weird we all know that so he said let's meet at this bar in Liverpool Street and we went to this bar and it had like an outside bench kind of area and it was a really nice bar it was a really nice bar where you don't behave in a certain way in the comfort of your friends in the comfort of your family in the comfort of your own home do what you got to do but at a really nice bar when there's other people around you when you're on your first date don't do that but just don't do this but then the first five minutes of speaking to him i realized he's not a very nice person and we're definitely very different people because he told me that his ex-girlfriends all hate him and i was like why do they hate you i was like i bet they don't and he's like no they do and i was like all oh, right and he was like probably because i cheated on all of them and i was like you're a goner. You're a goner, mate. You literally just made your own grave, babes, because we're never going on another day after saying that. Anyone that's cheated, no thanks. Sorry, not for me. No, thank you. No, thanks. Sorry. Some people might be able to do it, but I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. But it gets worse. <laughs> it gets so much worse. Then we're sitting there, and I'm funny. Like, I talk about everything. I don't care. I'm open, even though the other guy told me I wasn't. But I'm not open to this. See, so he burped 
right? And I was like, whatever, you burped, fine. But he was like, can I show you that I can burp the alphabet? And I was like, not really, babes, because we're literally on a bench next to other people and they were literally looking at him like, are you okay, mate? And I was like, he's okay, I'm not. I'm really worried about my situation right now. So he burped the alphabet, even though I never actually told him, yeah, show me, burp the alphabet as if it was his pride and joy, that was his party trick, I'm gonna get it out, as if every day he's been on, this is his go-to phrase. So then after he burped the alphabet, he obviously had a lot of flatulence this day, he farted, he farted, and he went to me. What do you think that was? The bench? Me creaking the bench? Or a fart? I said, I hope it's the bench. <laughs> and he was like, no, it was me! I was like, oh my God, I'm on a date with a child. He was 25, by the way, he was 25, he was a child. He was an actual child. He then asked me, which I think is the rudest thing to ask a girl, not about my age, about what my bra size was. He went, how big are your boobs? What size are your boobs? 34, 34 something? 32 saying, and what an A, B. I was like, listen, has your mum never taught you etiquette on, an, on a date? Like, are you actually joking me? Are you actually asking me what size my boobs are? And he's like, I just think, think it's funny. After he'd farted and burped, he decided that it was just acceptable to do it on the date and just continued to keep farting and asking me the same question, bench or me? This girl was literally staring at me and they were laughing. They were obviously on a date and they were laughing and I was like, I'm mortified. I was like, listen, I'm gonna go to the bar, like get the bill and pay. I'm off, I'm out, I'm really sorry. I could not ever work in that bar again because if he came in, I couldn't even stand looking at him. Like, are you actually being serious? Are you gonna burp and fart in front of me? Do I look like I'd be all right with that? Like, fair enough, you're my boyfriend. Why do I keep touching my boobs? Like, in front of my family, I don't care. Burp, fart, do what you've got to do. On a date? On a date, baby boy. On a date. So after those dates, you can realize why I'm still single, huns. Okay, and I'll probably be single for the rest of my life. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm open to love, I'm just not looking for it. That's basically me. Oh my God, Hans, I just did my first story time video. I hope you loved it. Can you give it a massive thumbs up if you like these story time videos and then I know you want me to do more because I have got a lot of story times. Story times about friends, story times about more dates. I've got story times about auditions, funny auditions, story times about difficult times. My, I've got so many story times. My family story times. Oh my God, I've got so much. Let me know if you want me to do some more story times because I actually really enjoy these. Sorry if my hair's been all over the place and I'm sorry if you didn't really enjoy the story times. If you didn't, then it's just my misfortune. I'm glad I get to share it with you. Obviously, that's a really awkward position, Imogen. I'm just gonna chill like this. So if you're new to my channel, then thank you so much for joining me, Hans. Thank you for even getting through this video. And I do this game on my channel where I mime a song and then you just gotta guess the song. It's all very exciting, so that's not that exciting in the slightest, but I'm gonna get that song now. I'm in love with the shape of you Last night you were in my room And now my bed sheets smell like you Every day discovering something brand new I'm in love with your body Oh, okay, I've got to do this song. It's by an amazing, beautiful, young, talented American girl. And I just love her so much. I went to see her in concert a while ago. Her first tour in the UK, I was like, oh my God. I've got to sing this song because it's amazing. Not that I'm going to sing it, but you know what I mean. I love that song. That's such a good song to go with the story time videos. I love that song. Just a taste of your lips on my ride. I'm just gonna stop singing. Why am I singing? I really hope you enjoyed this video, angels. I'm so grateful for all your support. You have no idea, honestly. I cannot explain it to you. There will never ever be an emotion to explain to you just what you make me feel. like. I can't, I actually can't, but thank you so much for supporting me on this journey, and if you haven't subscribed already, click the subscribe button, I'd be so grateful, I think she's down here, I think she's down here, there's a little photo of me somewhere, I think she's there, she's quite cute, she's me, okay, I love you so much angels, until next time, I'm gonna love you, and I'm gonna leave you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't think that takeaway was enough, I think I need some sweet. Maybe I need to venture to the late nap corner shop to get some sweets. Okay.